Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and this week, in our ninth episode about dry docking the ship, we're going to talk about one of the other three major projects that, at a minimum, we plan on achieving during the dry docking period. This is a 23-pound zinc anode. Approximately 1,204 of these, based on our most recent blueprint we can find, are bolted to the hull of the ship. They're primarily clustered around the shafts and the bilge keels. Thankfully, our dry docking footage from 1991 that we were able to show you some of a couple of weeks ago in one of these videos more or less confirmed the layouts of these. So, uh, we've got a blueprint that shows the location of where these zincs should go uh, from the mid-80s. And our assumption is that that's where they would have gone uh, in 91 when the ship was mothballed, but we didn't know for sure. And that dry docking footage helped us confirm that. So these little bricks of zinc are bolted on the exterior of the hull. And you can see they've just got the, these uh, two bolt holes. The studs are welded onto the hull. You put the plate on, you bolted them on. And that's very important for this working. Uh, this is part of our passive cathodic protection system. So, cathodic protection protects you from galvanic corrosion. Let me read you the definition for galvanic corrosion. Galvanic corrosion, also known as bimetallic corrosion, is an electrochemical process whereby one metal corrodes in preference to another metal that it is in contact with through an electrolyte. Galvanic corrosion occurs when two dissimilar metals are immersed in a conductive solution and are electrically connected. Battleship New Jersey is made out of all sorts of metals. Primarily steel, probably about 45,000 tons of the ship is steel, but we're made out of at least three different types of steel. Mild steel, high tensile steel, and armor plate, which itself is broken up into three different types. Special treatment steel, class B armor, and class A armor, which are metallurgically similar um, more so than it and the other types of steel around it. So, uh, the shell plating of an Iowa-class battleship is at least three different types of steel. So it's not bimetallic, it's trimetallic. Again, that's uh, STS, the armor plate around the uh, water line of the belt, high tensile steel, and then mild steel on the ends. So, uh, the, these steels are metallurgically different alloys of iron and other compositions. So, the least pure of those will corrode to protect the most pure. And likewise, when you mix steel with other metals, so for example, manganese bronze propellers in contact with steel, the steel is less pure than the bronze. Uh, also, many of the ship's sea chests are made out of various types of metals, uh, whether they're bronze or brass or uh, any number of other things. So, Iowa-class battleships, quite simply, have a bunch of different metals touching each other. And they're sitting in an electrolyte, in, in our case, water. And our water is mostly fresh, so it is certainly less conductive than salt water. But essentially, the ship is a battery. It's got two dissimilar metals in contact with, uh, with each other with an electrolyte around them. Further issue is that the ship has electrical power. The pier has electrical power. Stuff around us has electrical power. So there is already electricity flowing through that water. As the electricity flows through the water, it's going to start to remove molecules from the metals. Now, fortunately, more pure metals are less likely to have their molecules removed, but that's because the less pure metals are having their molecules removed. So. That means that the ship's steel hull, in the absence of any other additions, is going to start to rot away, particularly the mild steel, which is the thinnest part of the hull. And so we would expect to start to see leaks on the ends of the ship, like around our peak tanks and our shaft alleys, where we've got uh, heavy concentrations of dissimilar metal and that really uh, impure mild steel. So that's where cathodic protection comes in. 
there are two types of cathodic protection, passive and active, similar to sonar. Uh, passive cathodic protection would be you bolt this zinc on. The zinc is unpainted, the steel stud that is attached to is unpainted, and the point where this stud is welded to the hull is unpainted. This particular anode comes from the manhole from one of our turbo generator condensers. And so even inside the ship, like in our bilges and in other areas that are frequently wet, they would uh, bolt sacrificial anodes on. I'm not going out in the river and, and showing you what one on the side of the ship looks like. So we got this, it's the exact same type of 23 pound anode. Uh, so again, 1204 of these bolted to the outside of the hull and they are directly in contact with the steel. If you paint between them, it's going to be less effective. So that's why the, the studs are unpainted. And you can tell that the zinc is much more pitted and corroded. You can see that the white dust is uh, the byproduct of corrosion. It, it's the equivalent of rust on zinc. So that is our current passive system. The problem is the ship was mothballed in Bremerton, Washington in salt water. So they use zinc. In fresh water, uh, you might use magnesium if it's truly fresh water. Uh, aluminum is also common in fresh water and brackish water. So we've had divers down to look at the ship and they have reported minimal corrosion of our zincs, which means they're not working, probably because we're sitting in fresh water. So uh, we definitely want to remove these and replace them with aluminum anodes when we go into dry dock. Again, this is the passive system and Iowa class battleships had an active system installed in the 80s, primarily because they're made with so many dissimilar metals and they, they were so old, they had had so long to rot. Typically, Navy ships are designed to last about 20 years. That's what the Iowas were designed for. Uh, and maybe they'll be used for 50 years. So the Iowas are getting to the end of that lifespan. They're starting to see heavy corrosion, pitting, rust, things like that in the hull, uh, which means that she needs more cathodic protection. Here's the ship. Here's where we are right now. These wires, well, one set goes up you know, from land, brings the power in, but then this goes down and they have wires that go in the riverbed under the ship here. And this goes aft too. Then the South Tower has the same thing, comes up, goes here and aft. So when I'm doing this test, I am just checking the voltage uh, resistance and all, make sure everything, we have power coming in, yada, yada, yada. Now the 90 day tests, we're actually testing the voltage. I'll be going on the ship, all these points. See them, one, three, five, six, and then uh, two, four, six, eight on the side. And I'll show you that too. So an impressed current system was put into the hull. And in that you put a, a mild electric charge through your metal. And uh, don't ask me scientifically how that works, but it helps prevent dissimilar metal corrosion uh, by a very similar way that uh, the passive protection works. When New Jersey went into the yard, uh, probably 1986, 1987, they measured how they were gonna fit it on her. And then when the other three Iowas went into the yard, they installed these systems on them. But then New Jersey is decommissioned in 1991 before that system's been installed. So we've got the blueprints for what it's supposed to look like. It's not there. New Jersey doesn't have it. Um, the, the other three Iowas got it. We never did, even though uh, if you look in most places, it'll say that all the Iowa class battleships got an impressed current cathodic protection system, ICCP, uh, which is a, an active system added in the 80s. Never happened to us. That's okay because the museum knew this was an issue and we installed an impressed current system. In our case, the anodes that we're using are a cast iron that's high in silicate, and there's probably four of them below the ship. And they, they would likely start out as, as a thousand pound chunks, half a ton chunks that were just set in the mud below the ship. And we have uh, a pair of electrical systems built into our pier that runs power uh, through them. So it's making an electrical charge that is optimal for us not uh, having the steel corrode, but instead that iron corrodes. 
Uh, so that system is great, and when it works perfectly, there's no need for a passive system. I just don't trust an active system to ever work perfectly. Uh, when we had divers go down, we shut it off. And it took me a week to remember to turn it back on again. Uh, if we lose power, maybe it goes out. If something happens to the pier or, or the system just gets old, it's over 20 years old at this point. Um, and we have it tested every year. Uh, our friends at Anode Solutions, who are our cathodic protection experts, come out and check on us once a year, make sure everything's good. They, they keep reporting that it's working fine, every, everything looks good, we've got reports. Um, but I don't trust that it will function forever, and if they're only coming out once a year, you know, something could go wrong after they leave and, and uh, we don't find out about it until a year later. So, our plan is in dry dock, and this is probably the lowest tier of our three things. We absolutely have to paint the ship. We absolutely have to repack uh, through hull openings. Um, and then the next most important thing is to replace the zincs. But you know, if this really has to be an restore project, this would be the, the first of those three core things that I would cut off. Now, hopefully, with your support, we will be able to achieve at least those three things. Uh, and, and maybe if we get a ton of support, we'll be able to do more than those three things. But at a minimum, that, that's what I need to do. And that's why your support is important. It determines how much of our critical tasks we're going to be able to do. And this is a once in a generation process. It's been over 30 years since the ship was last dry docked. It will probably be another 30 years. So this is uh, the, the one time in our careers that, that we'll get to see this done. And we want to do the best job that we can. Uh, so we really appreciate your support. There is a link in the description below for ways that you can donate to help us reach our goals so that we can do this project. I've had questions of uh, would we sell these zincs? And the short answer is uh, yes, if at all possible. Our current Navy contract allows us to only uh, sell parts that are removed from the deck project, so the studs and the teak and the money we make from that has to go back in the deck project. Now I've reached out to the Navy for permission to also sell uh, zincs removed from the hull and dry dock because we're gonna replace them with a like material. And I, I expect they will give us a variance and allow us to do that. But uh, that assumes that these come off the ship in any sort of good condition. And like I said, the divers said that they're relatively intact. We may or may not find that that's true when, when we take the ship out of the water. Surely some of them are, uh, but they didn't survey all 1,204. So uh, assuming some of these are in good shape, they might weigh about 15 or 20 pounds at this point, originally 23 pounds, uh, we would absolutely sell them. Keep an eye out for that next year. Um, but I know that's a question I've gotten a couple times now. Otherwise, uh, we really appreciate your support. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. You can support us at the link below or uh, by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about our museum, our channel, and this very special project that we're in the middle of. Thanks for watching.